So, in a little bit of a celebration for the upcoming uh, Blue Underground 4K release of Dead and Buried, I decided why not to review the DVD that I have uh, sitting on my shelf, pretty much. Um, haven't seen this in quite a while, so it's kind of a perfect opportunity. Um, I like the sounds of what... Um, what the new 4K is uh, seeming like with like the packaging and everything. And uh, the transfer sounds like it's going to be really good. Uh, the features obviously sound like they're going to be packed. So um, real good stuff. I kind of, uh, first of all, I forgot that I even own this, to be honest. Um, but I, I just, it's been such a long time that I've seen it that I, it kind of like, the whole thing pretty much slipped my mind. Um, like plot wise and everything so watching this I remembered a lot of it but I also at the same time forgot a lot of it too so a lot of it was almost like a first time watch or at least that's how it felt but um, regardless this is uh, the screenplay is written by Dan O'Bannon which uh, that name pops out pops up everywhere he's involved with Return of the Living Dead um, worked on Night of the Living Dead uh, big name in horror obviously and uh, he wrote it, and this is directed by uh, Gary A. Sherman, and uh, yeah, you also got a, a cameo, kind of a cameo, from Robert England, Robert England, in one of his earlier roles. Um, you can definitely tell he's a lot younger in this one. When did this one come out? This is a 1981 film, so yes, it does predate um, A Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> Mind blank. Um, the music is by Joe Renzetti, and it definitely sounds pretty depressing, especially at the beginning. You get this really heavy, like, funeral-esque funeral kind of piano riff. Um, it's a very sad, kind of dreary opening. Um, starts off with this guy on a beach. He's a photographer. Um, he's kind of doing some landscape shop, shots of, like, the ocean and the beachfront and all the all this and uh, you get this woman who comes up and starts pretty much flirting with him and throwing herself at him and making it very direct that her interest is uh, uh, you know very heavy and alive and uh, she just asks him if he's a photographer and says that his camera is amazing and basically is asking him if she's good looking enough to be a model and um, he goes for it She's very, very forward and kind of suspicious, but uh, he goes for it. She takes off her top. You get, uh, you know, a boob shot in the first, like, less than three minutes of the film. Um, and <laughs> she, um, she basically is not what she seems because uh, she eventually uh, gets a hold of this guy and this whole berate of other people grab him and end up tying him to a tree with this kind of fishnet stuff. It's like this, um, basically this net that they wrap around him against this tree and pour gasoline all over him and light him on fire and <laughs> burn him alive. And that's pretty much what leads into the opening kind of credits. And then the story starts to focus on a sheriff named Sheriff Dan. And he's the sheriff of this really small town called... Um, Pl Plotter's Bluff. Welcome to Plotter's Bluff. It's this really small beach town-ish with very small amount of people. And then the film kicks off where the victim that was burnt alive is found in a car. So clearly he was put there to make things look like an accident and this eventually makes the uh, sheriff uh, suspicious. And the sheriff is trying to figure out uh, where this random killing kind of came from so public not publicly but so out in the open kind of thing because it happened during the day too and he's totally confused on <clears throat> why this would happen in such a, an odd place um not too long after the town drunk ends up being killed as well and uh the same mob of people come around so you basically get this gang of people causing murders and it, you start to wonder right at the beginning how they're getting away with these killings in such a tiny town where everybody knows everybody. Um, 
if they're townsfolk, you would think that they're all known <laughs> kind of thing. And um, as the film progresses through the first act, you start to see these people who are involved in these killings, um, regular members of the town. Like one woman works at the diner, um, and then later on in the film you notice another guy's at the diner, another guy that was involved in the, in the killings, and you recognize their faces, and you're like, these are just regular town folk. Like, how are they getting away with all this, uh, all this murder? Um, it's a, it's a pretty bonkers film. Like, the, the plot is very, very, um, quirky, but it's, it's dark. It's not, it's not a humorous film at all. This is a pure disturbing gore fest horror, like, uh, like from beginning to end. Um, and it takes itself very seriously, but I mean, the plot is just so bizarre, <laughs> Uh, as it goes and right up to the end like the the final like 15 20 minutes is just once the all the reveals start to come out um, It's uh, it's just ridiculous. So one of the first things uh, Sheriff Dan ends up doing is questioning the mortician of the town uh, he runs a like a funeral parlor called Dobbs mortician and um, he's questioning him on bodies out of command because he's responsible for um, kind of uh, fixing them up, uh, for lack of a better term. So then basically as the film goes along, you have Dan, Sheriff Dan, um, kind of in a murder mystery, and he's trying to figure out what the hell's going on in this tiny ass town. And um, a lot of the townsfolk starts to see bodies that were supposed to be dead or people that were supposed to have been murdered walking around town. like. The original guy that was burnt alive is seeing pumping gas. His name is George, and um, and it just with every with every murder, this um, this cult of people seems to be growing bigger and bigger. And um, it ends up Dan's wife is uh, Dan finds this witchcraft book in one of her drawers and questions her about it, and she claims that she's. Uh, studying the world of witchcraft to teach to her students, which, mind you, her students are elementary school age. So she's teaching her elementary school classroom uh, witchcraft. It's very strange. Um, but with further investigation, it turns out that, um, uh, not George, uh, Dobbs, the mortician, is basically preserving these bodies because he's, uh, he's kind of a mad... <laughs> mad mortician you could say like mad scientist but like he's a mad mortician that uh develops this huge fascination for um bodies being like plasticized and then revived because he he also studies witchcraft himself and finds a way to re revive all these bodies and he's basically turning this small town into a town of the undead really um where it turns out a lot of the people actually don't even realize they're dead and as the twists start to come out you start to realize that a lot of people that you thought were seeking answers to the dead and searching for the dead and all that are a lot of them if not most of them if not all of them dead themselves so that's pretty much where the the plot uh, goes as the film goes and that's essentially what the film is about is this town being turned into an entire <laughs> undead town, pretty much. Um, I really like the scene. The whole the whole thing with George involving George's death being burnt alive is highly disturbing, especially when he's wrapped in all the bandages and he's at the hospital, and then he sees the woman who claimed, like, she used a fake name, but she claimed that her name was Lisa. She comes in dressed as a nurse and stabs him with a needle right in the friggin' eye, the only eye, that <laughs> his right eye, which was... Le no, his left eye, because his right eye was uh, burnt in the fire while he was burnt alive. And um, I like how um, the villains are kind of revealed like as the film starts off, because when it comes to the victims, like, for example, there's this family that uh, is in need of gas because they ran out of gas in their car, and then they go into the diner, and they meet up with this woman, the, the woman like working at the diner who you know is one of the villains. And then they, there's a guy eating at the diner who as soon as he turns around you see his face. You recognize that he is also part of this cult of 
people that murdered George. So you know that um, something bad is about to happen with this family, especially since they have a young child with them. And you're just like, oh my god, the dread starts to uh, build up inside you as an audience. And I kind of like that because it, it kind of, it leaves you on edge, it leaves you on edge as the film progresses. But um, as they follow this guy to get gas, they end up getting into an accident. And for some reason, they, they walk into this house, which, because they see like a light flicker inside of it. So they, they, they go seek help. But this must be like a 70s and 80s movie trope or something like that, where you get people who are seeking help. So they just randomly walk into some stranger's house. It's like, you don't knock. You just open the door and be like, hello, we need help. We got like, and then they start walking like all over the house. It's like, oh my God, you never see that happen in real life um, for obvious reasons. But like in the movies, people just walk into random homes and expect nothing bad to happen whatsoever. But uh, then they get chased out of the house by this crazy ass cult. And uh, there's a scene where they're speeding off in the car and one of the zombie voodoo zombie creatures or people whatever you want to call them jump on the hood of the car and start trying to smash the window um it's crazy stuff i like that um i like i like the whole small town feel on this and potter's bluff is like the perfect name for it it just sounds like a, a beachside small tourist town kind of thing um there's a scene where the sheriff hits uh, uh like hits a person and the he goes out to investigate and the guy's arm is on the on the grill of the car like his whole arm is on the grill and he notices that he doesn't know like he's speechless and like frozen he doesn't even know how to react and then the guy on the floor gets up without an arm snatches the arm from the hood and just runs off into the darkness i found that really cool um i do like the whole witchcraft and voodoo um direction that this went in i uh, i find i found that neat it's you know you think this is probably just going to be a typical zombie movie but the fact that they took they took it into more of a voodoo witchcraft direction was uh nice it's kind of like a change of pace kind of thing and it works really well um the way they put it together as quirky as it is as quirky as it gets um it's it's still rewarding at the end i find I love the guy that gets uh, the acid up the nose where they put the tubes up his nose and just uh, like shoot this like thick black acid like stuff and it just melts his entire face. It was so disgusting. Um, and uh, everything about the end, the end of the film where the <laughs> other than Dan or the actor who plays Dan, other than his atrocious bad acting for the last like five, ten minutes of the film where he's trying to act all like, no, and be all devastated is just laughably bad. But it's so funny at the same time. And uh, his kind of uh, interrogation or discovery of who Dobbs the mortician is and what he's been doing to this entire town when he sees that film that was given to him by his wife, who didn't realize that she was dead throughout the entire film and just that that last minute after he buries his wife for like the last time because he wants to put closure to it and then goes back to Dobbs <coughs> and Dobbs like one last thing and then you get that absolute final reveal um that's when you realize like wow there's not a human left in this town <laughs> it's so great um, it's fun. It, Dead and Buried is, is, is fun. Like I said, about half of it I didn't even, like, like, I had forgotten, like, I had forgotten the plot for the most part. I knew the basic gist of it, but I had forgotten a lot about the film, and, uh, it was really nice to revisit, and a perfect time to. I'll definitely be picking up the, the 4K release that they're putting out, uh, it's probably out, like, this week, I think. Um, but yeah, it's cool. I, I love the cover. I love the atmosphere. I love the, the kills, the costume designs. Um, there's the nurse putting the needle in the eye. Uh, it's great. It's, um, it's really good stuff. I recommend Dead and Buried 100%.
Um, but that's all I got for that. So subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you like to listen to my voice or if you like my film reviews. Uh, I'll be back with plenty more as always. So until next time, take care and cheers.